running on the time that there's like the ABC and more. Okay. So if you want to have a lunch break, I think we should start again. So Cyblast, that stands for Position, position Specific Iterative Blast, it was sort of a revolution in the SQL search field when it arrived in 97 or something like that. Uh, as you see from the name, Position, so a position here, Specific, so this is like from, and then it's iterative, so it actually does things several times in a row. So start, and then it uses blast. So it makes a multiple sequence alignment, but what? Well, in a very simple way. And then generates a profile, and then compare this profile to the sequence database again, and make a new multiple sequence alignment and a new profile. And iterate through this like a cycle, so you can do it as many times as you want, or until it doesn't find any more hits, or until you say you shouldn't do it any more times. So basically it looks like this. You have a sequence, you do standard blast searching, exactly like we did um, yesterday. So you take some results here. And this is the actually important, because these e-value estimates are good. Earlier attempts at these similar things often had much more heuristic methods here, saying how oh, we include these if they are this long, etc., etc. But they uh, did not, uh, often you, if you start including wrong hits here, you get, uh, often it gets quite bad. And the other thing that was good is the blast was fast. So before, if you did the program, it took a long time. You did multiple six alignment, and you did the PSSM, and then, so this is a, pro pro so a profile, let's describe the position here, so you have for every amino acid in each position, you have a certain score. And then you do, it, and you do this until you don't want to do it any longer. So until maybe, basically a few years ago, this was clearly the state of the art method. Right? Nothing really worked better. You can modify it a little bit, but it really produced very good alignments. And the good thing is that it's fast. It's because you don't, do, because blast is fast. So maybe it's, I mean, if, if blast is, Hundred times faster, you do this three times, you third times faster than dynamic programming. And but also, you get significantly better results than you with just dynamic programming. And better is mean, I mean, if you have distant homeworks, programs that are not that similar, but they are similar, the alignments are better, so you get more accurate alignments, and also you have higher or lower e values, higher scores for these, so it is more significant. So you find more distant hits. And this is how you have tested with a number of different uh, types of uh, uh, algorithms. But, sorry, I don't ask them now. So how do you compare two alignments? That's so you, you, you can compare, one way to compare two alignments is to use the structure. So you have two approaches that you know the structure of. So the structure alignment is, can you, you could call it a gold, gold standard. So if you take two so the structures, you align them, which is another algorithm we have not discussed, but you can do that. And you can say, if they are more similar, that one is better alignment. Or, you, or at least you can say, if you have this good standard, if the products look the same, you say these are homologous, because the structures are homo homologous, but even if you don't find the sequences that are similar, so then you have a benchmark. Say, these two you, should, you should find these sequences that are similar, and not the ones that are, not, that are dissimilar. So structure was a big key in the ingredients for benchmarking this. But then, um, how is it possible that Cyblas retrieves Better alignments than dynamic programming when dynamic programming has been designed to be exact. Yeah, but the, the difference is it's exact for two sequences. Ah. So you basically, the, 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 the it's exact for, um, I mean, it's optimal in the way that in the, our scoring function may. doesn't mean that it's best and that it always is correct, because biology is something else. <coughs> so giving that, that scoring between two sequences is the optimal thing you get. But the scoring functions are not always ideal, and they you, you, basically they are. Far away from each other, you often don't find optimal alignment. And you find the best alignment. <coughs> and I mean, it's both the alignment quality and the, particularly the, the, the detection. You, you want to find homologs. I mean, you want to find as many homologs as possible. So you take all the structures, you classify them into groups. We've got databases that do that. So these are the same and these are different. And then you find how many of the same ones do I find before I find any other ones. 
And if, of course, if, if sequences are 90% identical, you always find them. But if they are, it's always going to be gray, so in the difficult cases, and this is what you want to find. So, so you got it? Hmm? More or less. So, I mean, so basically, you don't have optimal alignments here, it's one of these lines, but in any non I mean, outside benchmark, how are you making you find more related hits? So, we, we will do that in, the, in on the web in a few minutes and just see how many hits you find. You find more and more. Assu then, of course, we don't know if they are correct or not, really, but it's just assume that the E value is correct. We can do it. So, this is a good thing. The E value is estimated quite good. It's not, there is a risk. That in this step here, when you, if you start including wrong hits here, so if you, if you didn't have a good measurement here, if you, have, if you include too many things, then of course then you find one hit is wrong, and then you can find more and more, and you can explode. And of course, the, the statistics then are based on these things here, so they are not, you can really start getting better estimates. But so there, there, is, there are some, so you have to be a bit conservative here. So there are a few parameters that are important, basically. This, this E value cutoff. I think the default is 10 to minus 3 or 5 times 10 to minus 3 or something like that. That's the default. So you don't you don't want to have 10 to minus 1 because then you start getting the wrong. Well, there is a big risk that you get wrong things. Number of iterations. In the beginning, I think you often say, oh, we, we iterate until we converge. We don't find any more hits. You find more and more and you stop. Nowadays, with the big data, is that basically never happens. And here also this low complexity filtering is often very important. You really have a uh, few hits if you don't do that. So in short, this is what you do. You collapse your, uh, yeah, your, your strong sequence. A key thing here is actually this multiple sequence alignment, actually you do it quite quick. You don't do an optimal multiple sequence alignment, it's going to take, also take quite a lot of time. So what you do is basically you have your sequence and you just add the alignments to it. So you have your query sequence to start with, but you never make any gaps in that one. You just add things to it and throw away all the things that are should make a gap there. That is, has, it's not an optimal alignment from a scoring point perspective, but it has an advantage that you, you also avoid this gigantic alignment with 10,000 gaps. Because you never you, you keep it the same length identical. So basically, if you had a multiple sequence alignment, that looked like hey, this somehow you only keep the positions. You, you basically take away this part here and ignore it. You take only your query sequence and the position that are concerned. There. So let's try it here. I guess this is also a sequence that I, I need to. Is I somehow selected? Hopefully it works. So you, you go to the same thing and you do NCBI. I mean, you a few servers, but you can do NCBI also. And you can try your sequence here. I guess I have. And uh, if you want to do it fast, you're running on Swissplot, it's a small database. And you do Cyblast, there are some variations on this one. This is Delta Blast, this is a very fast version, new, new version, but there are some variations, and this is. But that's the understand the Cyblast. And you see here you can run, well, you get maximum 500, you have a threshold in printing, and you just blast send a matrix, well, we just run it. So you see here, first, so this is very similar to the normal blast output, your first round. Actually, you know it belongs to some super family there, but it's, and you see that you have a few hits that covers everything, and then a few lower hits here in this region over here. So basically, you have three hits that covers everything. Uh, so you have uh, one, two, three, four hits that are uh, have 
good E values, not very good, but I tend to minus 3 or lower. This is just 3 times the, the minus 3. And then you have more hits that are slightly here. And so basically, this is the default. These four hits are over the cutoff, or below the E value cutoff. Uh, so these are the four ones, I guess it's one, two, three, four, this one's a bit short, but anyway. And then you run second iteration, let's click there. You could have included more of the hits later, further down if you wanted to, but quite, uh, if you do it manually, if you go through every step manually. And in this case, You actually only got three hits, so that's so you lost one hit, which is, you should do, but that can happen. Is that because it was right on the touchdown? What? It was like point. Yeah, it was, yeah it was very, the last hit was very weak, so maybe it didn't belong there, but, but may, that was, could have been that you found actually. So it, uh, it was a bit shorter, so may, maybe it was because it was not really there, or maybe it was. Uh, and normally it doesn't happen, but it was, it was a weak hit, you're right. So, and, uh, but we see what happens if we have more hits later. It's doing something. I think it was thinking time. But but normally at least you should be able. Uh, you should get uh, normally you get a few more hits. Otherwise it doesn't work with this. If you run it instead of against the whole database, which takes much longer. Right, we keep on talking and see if something happens here. Well, now this is running. This was the whole database. So they will still only find these four sequences. Fewer and fewer. Mm -hmm. mm, this one's this dead. Let's see. Are you running on the database? I don't think that's. Is that lost? No, uh, this is what I was running on. This takes a bit longer. Somehow I got my parameters from the other one and start changing that. This takes a bit longer. I don't know what's on. So this, where we look at this, we can actually see what it does here is that it defines the super family. So this is a database that we talk about later that have representatives of each family, or we've got super families like big families or families of families. And of course, there are much fewer these families. So there may be ten thousand. So that search goes very fast. 
And often it's uh, even more informative. But that's right. Well, this will last around for a while, and I'll we do talk about something else. So, what happened uh, after Cyber was developed was that there was a lot of, lot of secrets, we got more and more secrets, but there was a lot of um, computational tools that started appearing in bioinformatics. And one of these computational tools that is used quite a lot is what's called a Marco or hidden Markov model. So, to so, it's actually used for many different things. It's kind of a machine learning method, so basically, it's a program that you don't tell it exactly what you do, but instead you, you teach it by showing examples. So I'll talk more about that also next week. But in this case, it's used here. It's at least it's really used in the same way as user profile, but it's mathematically a bit different, and it's also trained in a different ways. But it, and it's becoming more and more the standard. To understand it, you need to know what a Markov chain is. So this is from physics. So basically, Markov chain is a chain of events <coughs> where, the, where, where the probability of what's going to happen next only depends on where you are at the moment. So you can have a Markov mo motion in, uh, in some kind of physics simulation where you ask, if I'm here, I have half the chance to be there and there, but it doesn't matter where I come from. So this is kind of the ideal Markov chain. Which is somewhat similar to what we do with dynamic programming when I don't care what's over here, but I can calculate this over here. So that's, that's why it works. So, for instance, you can have a, a, a probability of a Markov chain that you can have discovering the weather. It can be sunny, rainy, or cloudy. And you can calculate what, and you can, from observation, so in some other way, from training, you can say, if I had the weather today and the weather tomorrow, so if it's sunny, it's today it's 50% chance that it's sunny tomorrow also. This is, you just have a lot of observations and you can just calculate these numbers. Uh, and if, it, but if, if it's sunny today, it's also 37% chance that it's cloudy and 12% chance that it's rainy. Well, oh, it was raining yesterday. So or if it's sunny yesterday, it's 25% it's chance without rain. So you, you can calculate this transition probabilities. Of course, it depends on where you are. If you are in California, it's 1, 0, 0, 0. If you are in Bergen, it's uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. So that depends where you are. But, um, uh, and then you can basically say, okay, assuming that we start with some distribution, so it was Sunday today, what is the probability that it's going to be Sunday next sun Sunday? You can, then you have to iterate all these probabilities together, and of course you can jump back and forth and things like that. But if there are algorithms, basically similar to dynamic programming, that can calculate the, all these probabilities together in basically the same way as dynamic programming, and find that then it's going to be whatever chance it's going to be that it's sunny in seven days later. So this is a Markov chain. It's not very useful by itself, but uh, <coughs> when you start having hidden variables, it's actually very useful for many things. So you can you can have, and particularly you maybe don't know if it's sunny or cloudy or rainy, but you have some observations. You have some if it's dry or dry or soggy, and you want to calculate. This is actually what you observe, and you want to calculate what is probability that actually you have that you had this before. So each of these states here then have a emission probability. So basically, probability that if it was sunny. I observe soggy is something. If it's damp, it's another number. It's probably dry is the highest number in this case. So you have both the transition probabilities here, and you have the emission probabilities here, here, there. And then you have a set of these, and from this one, you can calculate the most likely distribution of these probabilities on here. So you can say, even, even without directly observing how often it goes on suddenly cloudy, by observing these observer states up here, I can actually make a model that is describing this, also using something similar to dynamic programming. So this you can think about, is this is actually, uh, so, yeah, so you need, to, in addition to this, 
transition probabilities here. How like that we want to calculate. That you want to you also want to have some emission probabilities. So they say that you have if it's sunny, it's six percent chance that they observe dry. So this is how the model looks like. Then of course you use your observation to calculate all these probabilities or to estimate them. So this, this takes some training and then you have to go through all password and password, but, it, but there are algorithms that can do it. So basically from an observation of these four states, I can go back to this matrix here, this is an estimate for that. So I can use the same type of model to describe an alignment or in particular even a uh, fam proof of alignment, but you basically you have alignments. So basically I can have states that look like this. Well, maybe, maybe I can go on the left version. Just easier. So I describe each position in my sequence as a state here. And each state has three, three paths. A match state, insertion state, and deletion state. So back up here again. So if I'm in deletion state, it's an alignment I will delete. It shouldn't be something I have a gap in one of the directions. I can jump to an insert state directly, or I can jump to the next uh, match state. The same thing for the insert state here, I can match up here. And from a match state, I can match, match to the next ma match state. So basically, I have each state has three probabilities. I can go up or down. Exactly like I have here in the matrix, I go there, there, or down. So, so I, I can basically, if you have an alignment, this is how for the family, I have these matches here. So basically, I want to align a new sequence to this, to this, to this sequence. This is a sequence of pro family or things. I can see, I can go align three positions, match, match, match. I can go to match, I can go to insertion, and then turn around here for a while, go back to match, and then go to match, and then go to the end. Or I can do a deletion in the beginning, and I can go back to the next match state, and then I can go to an insert state, and then I can go to this match state, and then to the end. So I can, I can describe my alignment in this kind of model. You, there are some differences. Sometimes you can you go from insert to delete directly, sometimes you cannot. It depends on how you make your model, but that's more of a detail. So I, in principle, I could describe an alignment by path through this graph. And what I want to do is I want to have this in each of these states, I want to tell what is the emission probability. So what, what is the likelihood that a certain amino acid or sequence matches that state? And that is basically how likely is it to be emitted, like the same thing as we had in the, this one over here. There. Uh, not this one, but that one. So what, this is the emission probabilities. So what is the probability? That in a, in a sunny state, emit dry. Or the same thing, what is the probability that in a sort of match state, emits an alanine? So, in some way, what I do is basically I go through this path here and I can generate the sequence I started with. So, basically, I have an alanine, so what is the probability I find if I go this path like that, that I generate the sequence alanine, glycine, alanine. And then I can do what is the probability that I generate the sequence if I go through this path over here like that, or some other path. And there are algorithms that I can calculate the probability for a given Hillenburg model to generate take all possible paths and generate my sequence. Or I can find the most optimal path. So there is a slight variation of dynamic programming, basically. So this is basically just another way of describing uh, sequence alignment. And particularly if you then have a profile or a PSSM, if this state then represents the probability to find a certain amino acid in a certain position, I can uh, then have, for instance, you have a position there, it's going to be just program, match one. Okay. So then it's very, very likely that I find a program there. You see, I never put everything else to zero. It's, it's never zero probabilities, but it's low probabilities. But you can have another position in two here that says it's a, I the most common one, but it basically doesn't really matter. And the third one, maybe you have zero in three unine. 
the common. So this is really like as a profile. You calculate the probability of finding some minus in each position. This one is more distributed. And I can also of course do both local and global alignment. If I do a local alignment, I can just because I can just start from my start site to end of these sites here instead of starting just the first one. So I, I can vary things like uh, well, I can make other things about mark models like we're gonna talk about this on Friday, I think. I can have similar models that are very that have, have very different length dependency, so it depends on how I put this together. And you can turn around here, you can have different distribution of length, probability of different lengths, etc. So I, I can play around a lot with things with like for these models that describe what the biology. But that's more of next Friday. So the difference is basically from, from profile is basically that I, I and then I have said so I have Basic two types of algorithms. One is I can score for all possible paths. Basically, how likely is it that this, given all paths together, that this sequence is generated for this profile, not this hidden model, model? Or I can take the most probable path, which is basically find what is the most, what is the best alignment. An important difference compared to profile is actually that I might have different scores for every insertion here. All these can be independent differently. And, pro and I can, for instance, if I never ever observe a uh, insertion between state two and three, I can have very high gap penalties here. Or if it's very common, I can I can have very low gap penalties here. Also, so high probability that you take this path. So I really can adjust everything very fine grained into every position. And there are uh, sequences methods to do it called the uh, expectation maximization. I basically can do it using an underlying sequence. So I start with one, with one sequence and I add uh, my model and I add things to it. It takes a bit to try and train it, but it's not that so. And there are also lots of heuristic methods to do it uh, uh, quite fast. So, that, that, uh, so in principle, you can say this is basically a detailed profile method. You can really the difference is that you really have much more individual positions and individual scores for every position in the profile. Uh, but it has been shown that it's very effective to take the normal homologs. If you do it the right way, you are doing better than if you're side lost. On the other hand, traditionally it was actually quite slow. There are a couple of new implementations, one called Jackhammer, one called uh, HS Blitz, that are Using tricks similar to Blast, speed it up. So they are kind of useful, and sometimes there are some uh, problems with fitting, But in the methods used today, they are not so severe. So I mean, let's see if we manage to get this running here. The profile. So see here I found many more hits as expected, and I so basically see I found I don't know, I don't know I see the number somewhere. Uh, It doesn't really say, but we just run them. You can see here, it was basically this much of top ones. So on the second iteration, and I should be find more. This just runs, yes. So this takes some more time. Um, one question about the yes. Mark model. Um, so to start with, to use it, you have to already have an alignment that you generate as. Uh, you have to at least have a set of sequences. You don't really need to have an alignment. It depends on which training method you use, but in principle, you can sort of you can do it quite similar as you do side loss, but you sort of one sequence, a set of sequences you want to align, and you add it. because you can basically iterate through all the sequences. Because you align one sequence with it, and you re-estimate re the probabilities and you can do that. But so then you, you could start with arbitrary, arbitrarily choose chosen probabilities? 
and then you would try to change from those? Mm, yes, you start with the random cell probabilities, and then then, yeah, then yes. often you use some heuristic things. Often you basically, I mean, often often you, do, you start with the multiple sequence alignment, and then you can just yes, calculate the probabilities in, in most cases using some well, yes, count them. I mean, as you have each type, and then but then but then what you do is that you actually uh, align all the sequence again against the model, and you can see how how, how frequent is the good in the past, and then you keep on optimizing that by expectation with maximization. And then is there a problem trying to use a Markov model with uh, a small set of sequences because of so uh, like it this reminds me if of you have only one sequence it's actually probably uh, it's actually worse probably than using dynamic programming because it's just some technical issues how you have substitution matrix and so on that are not implemented in the best way but in print yeah but certainly too few might oh, it's a very very low number or even a high number, basically identical ones is the same thing. You will not uh, have any advantage. You probably might even do slightly worse than you do with dynamic programming. Because the way that sequence substitutions are implemented is slightly different. And, and I mean, the scoring matrices are, are implemented in not the same way. So it's going to be a problem, yes. And, uh, but it's... Uh, so you see, uh, yeah, yeah, so basically, there are nowadays this jackhammer, it's basically a side blast, very similar idea, but using uh, Hidamarkin models instead. And the reason why people didn't do it before was because Hidamarkin model searching was too slow. And now basically, you have similar tricks and other methods to speed it up. So, they, so they now it's maybe it's like it's going to blast, but it's only a factor two or something like that, so it's still doable. So this was my second iteration of sidebars to see how many more purple hits. I think this is probably because I have, I have more than 500 hits. So everything's purple. And you... So there are a few new sequences here that are marked here. And most of them are the same, but the green ones are, marked, are new ones that were not found before. And not, not over the cutoff. So there are... And of course there are, I guess... So the third one you see more of these. It seems that this list is longer. This stops, uh, yeah. And you have the e values down here, it's just. No, 10 to minus 12. So the e values are very good. I could run another round and I get even higher e values probably. So but let me see, I, I find more and more significant hits and more years. Nowadays it's hard to find the good examples because you, you find so many hits. And often the default, when you also know the default cut of a cycle is you only print 500 hits. And that's as many sequences as you find way many more. So, how do you decide what's important? Well, it depends what you want to use it for. I mean, do you want, I mean, do you want to. For practical purposes, I mean, it all depends on your question. Often people want to know what is my sequence doing, and then of course you're most interested in topic. If you want to use it for, we have methods where we do, we use correlations between different positions in different in in in, in, in a multiple sequence alignment, and then we want to have as many as possible, and we want we have ten thousand or hundred thousand, so then we want to have everything. And uh, if you want to make a profile, basically, yeah, you probably want to have everything, but it's just Practically, it doesn't matter. If you want to find uh, really uh, evolutionary details of how these things evolved, you maybe want to search just in some subset of species, so some database that contains only human mouse and only, only primates. I think so it all, all depends on what you want to find. On, on, on to do with it. But the most common question is often, what is it doing? And then you basically just take top hits. So this is a DNA binding pro protein. From Klebsiella primini, that is one. I guess the difference is that this is one. Well, you see, and this is actually you see you have basically. You see here, even here you can see things that th this protein here is seven times identical, but it's actually e value is actually slightly worse than the ones that was four times identical. Because after a while, even if protein, I guess I don't know if I have this. Yeah, so this is the protein I started with, I guess. 
Chris Hamilton är antagligen inte alls det samma men det no, är inte alls en kavit det är inte alls en antagligen alltså det är inte men men jag tror inte att mutationen är bara bara så så det det spelar en roll det mest simma man i kolariserad professor men det är inte bara en toppen listad man kanske får en profil som man blir the average of the whole family and the a- average in this case happened to be more similar to the pneumonia protein than the, than the other ones. Mm. So, normally you find many more things when you do, when you use, when you use uh, Separate or side lost. For some reason you didn't do it in the first case. Because I, I don't know why, but, but uh, that's um, well. I guess there was only three, three, three correct hits there, most likely. That one was probably wrong. Mm. And uh, as I say, you, you can do the same thing with jackhammer. This is the same, basically very similar idea. That you get here, I mean, output is very, very similar. I don't know, a little bit wrong here, really, but you get similar hits. And it's actually quite fast also. This is, I think they have a special, uh, some special hardware that makes it very fast. Because normally when you run your own machine, it takes a long time, it's more sweet than So here, here you see the same thing. Here I found, of the first case I found 51 hits, of the second one I found 20,000. So I, I really increased number of hits. And you can see somehow, what, the distribution of these, and of course, right, you only show the first handle here, so they look the same. So the, the, the same, so you can do the same things nowadays. Now, you, on average, you get much better results using jackhammer and and uh, or HS splits than you do with side blast. Okay, so the protein factor people should be back at one, and I guess some of the others have a lab now. Or no, and well, well, you have lunch first. I think I think people are already there, but. I remember the schedule correctly.